methodology. All right. uh, most of the academic studies find harm. These are all of them by year they're published, and then the last two here have not been published. All right, so they're just working papers. But all of these find harm. And contrary to what I read in much of the literature, they're not that disparate in terms of their findings. All right? What you'll find is something like the Zentner paper will say file sharing reduced sales by 10%. It's actually 8%. Uh, and, that, yeah. and, and someone else will say Robin Waldfogel, two-tenths of an album for each illegal one downloaded. All right. And someone else may say a 25 or a 40 percent decline in sales. All right. Well, are they really saying different things? Well, the answer is if you take a look, they all have different time periods of analysis. When Zender does his, he's doing 2001 is the year where he's actually conducting his study. That's that's the data that he's using. Shares were only down by about sales were only down by about 10 percent. He finds file sharing leads to a decline of 10 percent. So his result is all of the decline is due to file sharing. And that's true of the Pikes and Rollberg paper. It's due to the Zenden paper. It's true in the Leibowitz. It's Michelle, or Michael, I don't actually know how you pronounce it, even though I've met the guy several times. Uh, he gets about 70% of the decline being due to file sharing. Robin Waldfogel will get something that is consistent with 100% of the decline being due to file sharing. Uh, Zender gets, in this, ver in this paper, uh, also something that's a little less than 100, but not that much less. Hong is the lowest here with 20% of the decline. All right. My 2008 paper gets 100% of the decline. Wald Fogel is basically redoing his earlier paper and getting the same results. Uh, Blackburn gets 100% of the decline due to file sharing. And Zender's new one has 100% of the decline. But the decline gets bigger and bigger year by year if it's 100% of a bigger number, which is what happens, which is why it may sound like they're different when an early paper says it's a 10% decline and a later paper says it's a 40% decline. But they're still, if you form a metric relative to the actual decline in sales, they're pretty consistent. And most of the decline seems to be due to file sharing in these studies. Now, there are some other studies that do not find this result. And I, I thought I'd spend a few minutes on those. Um, the first study is a paper that was written by two academics who are British uh, doing a study for the Canadian government. And... Uh, Here's a quote from their conclusion, but it may actually be in their abstract. I'm not sure exactly where it is, but it's a, it's a quote. And they say that in their results are that downloading the equivalent of one CD in files increases the purchase of these CDs by about a half of a CD. All right. And they say this with, as you'll see, a completely straight face. Um, and it is a fairly remarkable conclusion. Um, now, they made their data available, which was very good of them. You're supposed to do that, but not everyone does that. Uh, and if you look at their data, you discover that, uh, and they may even mention this somewhere, the average file share downloads the equivalent of 24 CDs a year. Seems like a lot, but that's what they say the numbers are. Uh, given their result that each downloaded CD increases sales of real CDs by a half, that should increase sales of real CDs among this group by 12 CDs per person. All right? And their results, because this is all based on a survey of Canadians. There's the survey that they used, which was conducted by the Canadian government for them, a particular portion of the Canadian government. Uh, in this survey, half the people in the population, according to the supposedly representative survey, uh, were file sharers. All right? So that if half the people were file sharers and the file sharers would increase sales of CDs by 12, then that means there'd be six, six CDs sold a year due to file sharing. All right? That's what their results say. If you just apply their results to their raw numbers. All right? That is really very interesting because if you take a look at how many CDs Canadians actually buy, they only buy two CDs a year. Now, that's actual sales. All right, so if the study is right, the recording industry in Canada should thank God for file sharing because nobody in Canada would buy a CD except for the fact that file sharing exists. All right, that is the implication of this conclusion. Um, and not only that, it's hard to know what to make out of it. The real numbers are that there would be minus four CDs sold 
per year, all right, without file sharing. Now, I don't know exactly what minus four CDs means. Maybe it means that the record companies have to pay people to buy four CDs, all right? But that's what the numbers say. Now, I actually told them, I, I, I emailed them and, and wrote them about this, and said, that seems crazy to me. Uh, plus, if you actually read their study, it has the entire population, file shares and non-file shares. Right. If you look at the entire population and they run their regressions, file sharing has a negative impact. But they say, well, we don't want to include the entire population. We want to run the study only on file shares. Never understood, it never made any sense to me why, but it did give them this negative result. But it would be like saying, let's see whether smoking tobacco makes people sick or not. And we have all this data, whether people smoke or not, and what their likelihood of dying from lung cancer is. And saying, well, let's throw out all the non-smokers. Let's only look at the smokers. That's what they're doing. It doesn't make any sense all right, when they get their positive result. All right, now, I will say uh, they were always very upfront of what, what their results were. Uh, they made their data available. They were proud of their results, to be honest. But when they finally published it, the positive numbers disappeared. All right, now they're saying there's no impact. All right, they redid it. And when I, I actually emailed them about that. And they said, well, you know, we got your comments, and that, among other things, made us decide that we needed to redo it. Of course, they didn't redo it the way I suggested they redo it, which is just include everybody and report those results. Uh, but now they're saying it's zero. Um, OK. Now, here are some other claims that are made about what's going on in this industry um, by other experts. And I'll just show you the claims, and then I'll talk about them in some detail. Here's a claim that says, discussing what's going on in the industry, it says, why there are major markets. Uh, where record sales are going up, uh, even though they have file sharing populations. All right, well, we've already sort of seen that. Here are all the major markets. All right, which one is not going down? And the answer is none of them are not going down. I have no idea where that came from. And this, I don't know how this happens that editors let this happen, but they make the statement without giving any reference to what those countries might be or what time period they may be looking at. Um, then I came across this statement here that says, uh, concert sales have increased more than music sales have fallen. A nice factual statement. But again, there's no reference to actual numbers. If you look up from Polestar, the concert sales, and you look up from the RA, the record sales, and you run them together and you take inflation adjustments, you get this diagram. Doesn't seem like it's going up. But they're saying it does. How can they do that? Um, I don't know. This is what you find in academic work sometimes. All right. Then there's this. Uh, there is a group of papers that report that file sharing does not hurt sales. Well, there is a group of such papers. And then they list some of them, one of which is a paper by uh, a guy at the University of Connecticut named uh, Badr Charji. All right. That's my best guess. Uh, I met him, uh, but he was actually asked about this. All right, and here's what he says. He was Chronicle of Education had heard that he had listed this and there was a dispute about whether he actually said that. And so he says to the Chronicle, no, we never said any such thing. All right, now, then there's this, talking about something I'm familiar with. Uh, one of the hypotheses as to why record sales have fallen, I haven't mentioned, all right? It has been suggested that the reason record sales have fallen the way they have, you saw the chart, is because there's been a shift from retailers who specialized in records to retailers that were big box retailers. All right? And the logic went something like this. Big box retailers are more efficient than record stores. They don't have anywhere near the amount of inventory because that's what makes Walmart so good. So they're carrying less inventory, and because they have less inventory, they're not buying as many records because they have to work through their old inventory. All right? So the claim was that the decline in record sales actually said is 50% or so is due to this movement to more efficient retailers who aren't carrying inventory. Well, that's actually sort of crazy because this has gone on for like eight years. I mean, these must be all records in that inventory. How is it possibly responsible for this? So I, had, I wrote something criticizing it, and I actually got some data on record inventories, which is an organization called National Association of Retail Merchandisers, NARM, which keeps statistics on retail inventories. And there was no reduction in the retail inventories over the period they were talking. All right, so this is their response to that. And their response is, well, of course, 
it doesn't show you anything in those numbers because Walmart is not included in those statistics. Now, when I first saw this statement, I said they must know what they're talking about. They're making a, a very simple, factual claim. It must be true. They wouldn't say it if it wasn't. So then I, I did a little searching, and it turns out there is a company that uh, made the news in 2008 called Handelman. And Handelman uh, was basically the retail merchant who handled music sales for Walmart. That was majority of their business. So yes, Walmart's not part of the NARM. They're not a merchandiser. But they do have a merchandiser that sells music to them. And that merchandiser happens to be called Handelman. Now you might say, or somebody might say, well, but maybe they're not a member of NARM. Well, guess what? They won Retailer or Merchandiser of the Year twice. All right, now remember, they got out of business in 2008, but they were the Merchandiser of the Year. The real reason they've gone out of business is because record sales are doing so badly. All right, but they're definitely <laughs> in NARM. They won the award twice from that group. So the claim that Walmart's inventories are included in the statistics is being made with no support whatsoever. Maybe they asked NARM whether Walmart was a member, but I don't even know that. Okay, here's another one. This is what you encounter sort of in this literature. In 2005, retail music sales rose in four of the five largest national markets. Well, in that year, here are the top 10 national markets. And yes, it went up in Japan, but it went down in every other. No reference, just a claim. And remember, these claims are made to support empirical results trying to show that false sharing is not causing record sales. Here's another one. In the US, the drop in 2005 is due to losses at a single firm. Here are the firms, and then there's this catch-all for the independents. And guess what? Yes, Sony BMG had, had a decline, but so did everyone else except UMG. And the others had the really big decline, the independents. So another statement, without a reference, that's wrong. All right. Oh, and here's one that, for those of you who are more statistically interested, uh, oriented. Uh, they claim that they're going to conduct a test, the writers of this particular quote, uh, using big champagne data. Uh, and they're going to see, tell us something about record sales. And their claim is that uh, they're going to use the summers to conduct a particular test because they know that college students are away from their campus computers and therefore there's less file sharing in the summer. That's their claim. Well, I happen to have exactly the same data, all right, from big champagne. And there's the first summer, and they're right. This is called seasonality, by the way. If something happens year after year after year, just like retail sales are basically highest in December because of the Christmas holidays, that's what they're arguing about the summer here. But there's the second summer in their data, no decline in record sales there. Here's the third summer, no decline in record sales there. This is just a statement that they're making, which they claim comes from this evidence that's just not true. And they might say they never looked at the data. And maybe they didn't. But they should never have said this. Now, who all are responsible for this large array of errors? All right, where is this coming from? Well, one pair of authors. All right, this is uh, the most well-known file sharing paper of all is uh, Professor Oberholzer G. and Strumpf, okay, who just litter their papers with statements without any references. All right, and then when you investigate, it turns out you can't know for sure that they're wrong, but the evidence doesn't appear to support it. They give you no evidence to support that. All right, now, what I haven't shown you is that, in fact, they make a crucial error in their main regression, something I was not aware of until last year. I've read the paper several times, but it took me a while to actually figure that out. Uh, that invalidates their main regression results independent of any of the other statements they make. Um, that paper's been sitting at the journal that published their paper. It's been there almost a year now. I don't know what's going to happen, uh, but I'm convinced they should publish it, but I, that doesn't mean they will. Okay, um, but there's one slightly worse thing, perhaps worse, I don't know, uh, and that is hiding your data. All right, and so I'll just give you a little bit of this. Um, this is a quote from this Chronicle of Higher Education story where the author was interested in, in this issue, where there is clearly a debate going on between us. And I was suggesting that they should have made their data public, something the journal that publishes their paper requires, but didn't require when their paper was submitted. They now require it, but not at that time. Uh, 
And so the question was whether or not 